Good afternoon, everybody. So I wanted to basically connect to three passages from our Torah portion today with some of the Hasidic interpretations as seen in the Sefer Iture Torah. Uh, and there are three things that are especially, especially always speak to me. So the first is about the Pesach Sheni, that we're told that those who are far away, those who are far away were given a second chance to bring it. We'll get to that in a moment. The second passage I want to focus on is the passage with the backwards nudes that when the ark traveled, like even saw our own, when the ark traveled, and we prayed that the enemies be scattered. And then the third passage that I wanted to focus on is the passage at the end of the portion where Moshe prays for Miriam to be healed after Miriam and Aaron are punished, or Miriam is punished for speaking for speaking negatively about Moshe. So the first passage, I want to especially focus on the words far away from the Pesach Sheni. So the the as an introduction to this passage, which is chapter 9, verse 10. I want to focus on chapter 9, verse 10 of the portion. As an introduction, the the passage begins with the laws of the Pesach Sheni, meaning to say that one year, one year after the children of Israel left, left Egypt on the night of the 14th of Nisan, one year after that, the they were commanded to bring the Pesach, the Korban Pesach again, the Paschal Lamb. But there was a group of people who were not able to bring this Korban Pesach. And that's because they were Tamei Nefesh. They had come in contact with the dead body, which de and therefore they were ritually impure and they couldn't bring the Korban Pesach. Which, which dead body they come in contact with? So the Sifre offers three opinions. Either it was the bones of Joseph. They were carrying the coffin of Joseph, which had to be brought up with them when they went to the land of Canaan. A second approach is that they were that this refers to the uh, uncles of Nadav and Aviu, Misha and El Tzafon. and the third approach is uh, who carried out Nadav and Aviu's body. And the third approach is that this was just a mate mitzvah; that this was a a dead body that they had found along the road that needed to be buried. So they were unable to bring the Paschalam that on that fourteenth of Nisan. So they came to Moshe Rabbeinu and they said, Lama nigara. Moshe Rabbeinu, why should we be diminished? Why should we be unable to bring this Paschal Lamb? We, after all, were involved in a mitzvah. We were doing something sacred. And now we're ritually impure and we can't bring the Paschal Lamb. And Moshe Rabbeinu said, let me go and ask God. Moshe says, Imdu Veshma, you stay here and, and, and I will go and hear what that which God will say, and I'll come back to you and tell you. And so from here, Hashem gave the Bnei Israel the concept of Pesach Sheni, the concept that if you had uh, certain circumstances, you're allowed to get a do-over, a makeup, if you missed the first Paschal end. And the, the Torah tells us, and that's what Pasuk Yud says, Daber al Bnei Israel anymore. God said to Moshe, speak to the children of Israel. And say that if you have one of these two excuses, ish ishkiya tamela nefesh, if a person will be ritually impure from contact with a dead body, or he's far away, and therefore he can't bring it on the 14th of Nisan. Either so those are the two excuses. Either they're far away or they were ritually impure. For you or for your generation, meaning to say it's not just in Sinai, wilderness, that you have this excuse, but rather it's for all future generations. 
then that person will have the opportunity to bring the carbon Pesach. And they're going to be able to bring it one month later, on the 14th of the year. So before we go to the interpretations, the, the many classic interpretations, I wanted to just focus on that verse. If you will be ritually impure, O B'derach Rechoka. So let's see what Rashi says about the word Derach Rechoka. One of the reasons why this always fascinates me is because this is one of the words in the Torah where it's called, where there is a dot above the letter. This is, there's, uh, if you look in the side of your Chumash, it says, Nikud al There is a dot over the letter hey. This is one of the what's so called punta extraordinaria, so, so the extraordinary points. And this is something that they, even the, when the scribe writes the Torah, when, when we write the Torah, we have to, we have to include this dot. Um, hold on one second. I just want to point out something. Okay. Um, so <clears throat> the, the, the Midrash tells us that where the number of letters which have dots upon them are greater than the number of other letters in the Torah, then we exp- uh we ex- we focus on the dotted letters, and so there, and and so in this case, the, the on the in this case, there's only one letter that has a dot on it. So we'll see what the Rashi tells us about this dot. Rashi says, "O rachuka, nikud alav." There is a dot above the letter hey. There's a dot on the hey of if somebody's in a distant place, and that's to tell us. It doesn't mean that you're actually distant. You get an excuse, you get an opportunity to bring a second Paschal Lamb. If you missed the first time, to bring a Paschal Lamb on what's called Pesach Sheni. Not if you were actually, technically speaking, far away. Not if you were all the way very distant. But if you're just outside the, the threshold of the courtyard of the temple, Calls non shlita means to say, as long as, uh, as long as uh, the the dot here is saying, as long as you are distant, as long as you are uh, spiritually distant, meaning to say, as long as you're not actually physically in the temple when this when the animal is being slaughtered. So the rabbis come and give this just tremendous leniency and say that this 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 exemption to be able to bring a second offering doesn't mean that you're actually very far away that you're in Brooklyn or or Muncie or Washington DC no it just means that you weren't actually in the temple at that time and then you'll have the opportunity to bring it a second the, a month later uh so this idea, we just once we're doing the Rashi, we just do the second Rashi. Rashi says, that the Pesach Sheni has, when you bring the current Pesach Sheni, that you're allowed to have chametz in your possession, even while you're slaughtering and eating the second Pesach. Unlike the first Pesach, where you're not allowed to have chametz from the, <clears throat> from the morning of the 14th of Nisan until the end of uh, the holiday of Pesach, here you're allowed to have the chametz with you in the house, the Ein Sham Yom Tov, and there's no festival there. Meaning to say, the date on which you eat the carbon Pesach, you bring it on the 14th of Er, and you eat it on the 15th. That day is not going to be considered uh, um, a holiday, and so therefore you don't recite the Hallel. The Ein Iser Chametz Ela Imo So, and the only prohibition of chametz. Is that you're not is you're not allowed to eat it with the carbon pesach, meaning to say you can't eat the chametz with the carbon pesach. But other than that, you're allowed to have the chametz in your possession. So this is what Rashi says about this verse of the pesach sheni. So I wanted to focus on this word derech rechokah because I've always been intrigued by what does it mean that you're on a spiritual that the person who is distant has an opportunity. To make it up, so so let's just look at uh, several explanations of this. 
uh, words, Obederach Rechoka. So the Gemara in Pesachim says, what does this mean? So this is this is the explanation of the Maharam of Rutenberg, who died in the year 1293. He says it means, the Gemara in Pesachim says that, what does it mean you're a faraway place? It means you have the ability to do it, and you didn't do it. And you had the ability to do it and you didn't do it. What does that mean? That in truth, this person is not so distant from the Torah and the mitzvot because he wants to bring the Pesach Sheni. But rather, he doesn't do it, meaning to say he's hesitating. He's, he's just unsure. He's not ready to fully commit. Uh, and so therefore, he's just like partners with the people who are ritually impure because he could do it. He wasn't, he was, he wants to do it, but he's just not all in yet. So that's the point. That's the point. That's the person who we're going to give a second opportunity. What's your second opportunity? To go all in. And that's why there's, there's, that there's one dot in the Torah that's above this letter, hey, this is what the Maram tells us, to teach us that if you're distant from the temple, that letter or that word is not part of the thousands of other words of the Torah. It's not measured with the thousands of other words. There's 304,805 letters in the Torah. And this one letter above the hey teaches us that that word is separated from the others. And we can find that word literally on the threshold of the courtyard. But nevertheless, it's out. Meaning to say, the person is far away but the path is not far away. He has a simple path. He's just on the threshold of being able to get in. So that's that's this concept that it's almost a um, person who's close, but he's not like everybody else. The Vilna Gon used to say that the this idea of the Pesach Sheni became a very big holiday amongst the Hasidic Jews. And to this day, we saw major celebrations of Pesach Sheni just um, a month ago, because uh, today is the 14th, uh, tomorrow is the 14th of Sivan. So one month ago, we saw Hasidic, Hasidic courts throwing major, major, major uh, festive celebrations on this day. And it's because I think the Hasidim look for any date to find the significance of it and the meaning of it and to and to elevate it. But the Vilna Gon, who was very upset with the Hasidim, he said, no, that's proof that they're on a distant path. They're far away. That's why they have to do this. So, okay, anyway, that's about the idea of Al-Derach Rochokah. But I want to say, what is what about the fact that they said, Lama... Nigara. So let's talk about two other verses that jump out of what they said. They said, first of all, they said, why should we be diminished because we were unable to bring it? So the Radomska Rebbe, whose kever, whose grave we went to, uh, I went to his kever just on the 21st of Adar. He says, we never find any other mitzvah in the Torah that you can that was established for a holiday that you can make up for it uh, on another date, except for the carbon Pesach. That's the only one that the Torah gives us another date for. Why is that the case? Because the reason is because of this tremendous desire that the people had to fulfill the mitzvah, that they were seeking it out and they were searching for it. And they said, why should we be diminished? And so he says that this is actually symbolic for the redemption of all of the Jewish people. 
Meaning to say, if the Jewish people will seek out redemption in this manner, if we'll seek out complete redemption, if we will feel like what, if we will feel, why are we not, why have we not been redeemed yet? Then the salvation will come. Then the salvation will come. That's a beautiful idea of the redemption Rebbe. And then the, about the idea of, of Moshe says, you stand here and I will listen that which God is commanding. So Rashi says, actually about this, Rashi says, fortunate is the, is the person who's born who could say, just wait here, I'll go ask God. <laughs> Can you imagine? Only Moshe Rabbeinu could do that. So, But the Karlina Rebbe, is bothered by this. He says, how is it possible that somebody so holy like Moshe could say, just wait here and I'll go see what God's commanding. Just the opposite. So he says, we learn from here the humility of Moshe. And this is how he, this is what he said to them. So he says, I'm due, meaning to say, meaning to say, in your merit, in your strength, because you are standing with me, Therefore, I'm going to be able to hear what God is commanding, meaning to say, because you're standing here and meaning to say, you stand here with me. That's how I'm going to listen. But if you move, if you go back to your house, then I won't have the ability to know what God is commanding. So he's basically saying, stand here and be with me. Just one more idea on this uh, discussion. uh, And then we'll go to the next passage that... um, Again, Rashi said that Moshe Rabbeinu's actions here was like a student who was certain he was going to hear the teachings of his Rebbe. And fortunate is the person who's born to a woman who's so certain that whatever he wants to, he could do, he could speak with God. So, so where did Moshe get this tremendous faith from? How did he know that God would give him an answer? So the answer is, The answer is that when these people came to Moshe so upset that they couldn't fulfill the mitzvah, and they said, why should we be diminished amongst all the people of Israel? Why should we be the ones who are left out? When Moshe saw them with their humility and with their upset, he was certain that he was going to be answered with their merit. Because we say in Tehillim that a, a broken heart uh, uh, God will not abandon. And so therefore he said, stand here and I will hear what, what Hashem will command to you, to you specifically. In your merit, I will, I will, in your merit, I will, I will be able to speak with the divine presence. Okay, so that's the, that's the discussion of the Pesach Sheni that I wanted to highlight. And now I want to go into the next passage. I'll stop this.